Before I start this video, let me take 30 seconds to tell you something about Exergic. Exergic is India's most trusted and most experienced institute for online gate preparation. I am Chandresh Mahajan, founder and chief educator at Exergic. I am an All India Rank 37 in gate mechanical engineering, an ex Indian oil officer having 7 plus years of teaching experience as of now. To know more about our gate courses, you can visit our website or contact us on these details. Also, you can download Exergic Gate Preparation app from Google Play Store. The link is available in the description of video. Have a look at this interesting question. Some of the students may find this question slightly complex, but trust me, it is extremely simple question and the explanation that I will give for this question will definitely improve your approach towards such type of mechanics questions. So make sure that you understand everything properly. Two cylinders are hanging from a shaft via connected rope as shown. As you can see in the diagram, this is the shaft that we have, right? This is the shaft, this one, this one. And two cylinders, cylinder 1 and cylinder 2 are hanging from that shaft via connected rope. This is the rope, this is the rope, right? And as you can see in the diagram, the rope is wounded, right? Is, you know, uh, wrapped about the shaft. It's not just hanging by a single connection, but we have given it a couple of turns, right? The two cylinders remain in a slow, steady motion. Important line, important keyword. Two cylinders remain in a slow, steady motion, right? So basically, whatever velocity that they have, some, the heavier one obviously is going to go down, as you can see. One is having a mass of M, that is going in the downward direction, obviously. And the lighter one is one-tenth of the heavier one in mass. So that is obviously going up. But the motion that they are having is slow and steady. No acceleration, no jerk. With a simple and constant velocity they are moving. It's interesting to note. It is important to note this information for this question. Find the coefficient of friction mu between the rope and the fixed shaft. Obviously, when this is going to go down, this rope will also tend to move with it. But the shaft is fixed. Shaft is not rotating. Shaft is fixed. So shaft is there only. But the rope is moving against the shaft. Cylinder is moving and bringing the rope with it. This one in the downward direction. So rope also has a tendency to move like this. Right or not? So rope is rubbing against the surface of the shaft. This is the case where you have to find out the coefficient of friction between the rope and the fixed shaft. What do you think? What friction this is? Is it static or kinetic friction? Obviously kinetic friction. It is not static friction because the rope and the shaft are having a relative motion between them. The rope is moving against the surface of the shaft. So obviously this mu value is kinetic friction. It's mu k. Correct? And not mu s. Now, whenever you look at any of such question, I am giving you a very powerful tip in this question, which will help you in solving a whole variety of questions easily. Look, do you know that this question belong to the category of belt and pulley? You can solve this question via the concept that we have learned in belt and pulley. Some of you will be able to guess it. How? Because this example which I am teaching, it is in the unit of belt and pulley, right? We have covered belt and pulley in previous so many lectures. Obviously, you will realize that Array, sir, belt and pulley ke unit mein if you are teaching, obviously it will be question of belt and pulley. But if this question is asked to you students in any exam, where obviously topic will not be mentioned, many students will struggle to even conclude that from which topic is this question? How to start? Which formula to apply? They will, they might go into drawing the free body diagrams and all for these cases, right? But this is a very important learning for you regarding belt and pulley. Belt and pulley concepts, belt and pulley questions, their, the formula that we have covered, they are applicable in a lot variety of cases 
those cases which will never look like belt and pulley to you this can never look like a belt and pulley problem as such but if you i will talk about all the small details but if you look at it this is like a pulley and this is a belt wrapped against the pulley right there this is the first example right in this unit this is the first example that we are solving which is a very basic one as we will keep solving more and more examples you will realize that the cases will keep getting more and more complicated and even in those complicated situations you will be able to use belt and pulley so basically in any mechanics question whenever you have been given any shape and you feel clueless where to start if you have any situation where there is some rope there is some cord there is some string which is wrapped around any shape which is circular slightly circular in periphery it can be this shaft like this it can be a pulley it can be a disc do consider the expression the formula the concepts that we have covered in belt and pulley 100% it will help you if you recall the derivation in the belt and pulley it has got nothing specific to do with belt and pulley any circular periphery and a belt any surface any rope over that those expressions can be applied here in this case easily and in many more other cases that we will see in further examples so this is very important realization for you while solving mechanics problems right now second point some of the students may think that sir the expression that we covered and we derived if you recall the derivation that we did so it was done considering it was done considering that that both of them the pulley and the belt are not having any relative motion there is no slip correct or not the derivation that we did there i think i have discussed it already in detail right so i am not going to repeat everything again i think for about half an hour to one hour i have explained all the significance of this i am not repeating that here but i'll just tell you that this is something that we use there in the derivation and i discussed about this as well mu s mu limiting and all we have already covered right point here is that when this belt is slipping or moving but the pulley is not moving or in this case shaft is not moving but this rope this string is moving then there is a relative motion between them right the expression that we have derived if you recall what we did we considered tension here tension here and then we applied the static equilibrium condition summation fx summation fi and all correct in this case what to do it is not at rest definitely but can we use that same expression i will give you two reasons that how and why you can use this expression reason number 1 logic number 1 question mentions slow steady motion steady motion means motion with constant velocity means acceleration is zero acceleration is zero and i would like to recall you the basics of mechanics that statics is not only about bodies at rest statics is also about bodies having same velocity uniform velocity no change in velocity basically statics is about zero acceleration when body is not accelerating there are two ways in which any body can do that by remaining at rest no acceleration not at t is equal to 0 not at t is equal to 1 not at t is equal to 2 seconds or having the same velocity at t is equal to 0 t is equal to 1 second t is equal to 2 second right both of these cases are of zero acceleration both these cases belong to statics in both of these cases you can apply summation fx summation fy and all so whatever derivation we have done using the concept of statics can be applied in this case because this is also case of statics there is no acceleration involved if this was accelerating then it would have been a different story but here it is not accelerating question has specifically written alag se question has mentioned a statement slow steady motion so zero acceleration concept of statics are applicable all the derivation that we did is apl applicable and if this entire derivation is applicable the final expression will also be applicable so mu value definitely we can use here whatever mu means question is asking you the mu value but in that expression whatever mu value we are going to find out it will be fitting here it will be giving you an answer here and this was the first logic first concept second thing i have already discussed this second thing i am just reminding you about it recall that i have already done a discussion regarding mu that mu in the expression can be used for non limiting cases of rest 
for limiting case of rest and also when in actual case slipping is happening at that time also it can be used point is that ratio will keep on fluctuating correct but here again there is no fluctuation of ratio again there is no fluctuation of tension on a tighter and slack side how because question has given the tension here will be equal to you know this weight that we are going to have here tension on the other side will be equal to this weight here so there is no fluctuation in the tension as such in the way the question this question has been framed so point here is that in this case we can just use the case of slipping and we can easily use the expression that we have already covered so two things i have explained two logics two concepts i have told you using which the expression that we have which is actually derived for limiting case for pulley and belt at rest at limiting case that can be applied in this case also when there is relative motion between them because this is a constant velocity relative motion without acceleration without any jerk so here that expression is applicable this is very important thing that you have to realize because even if you figure out that chalo i will use the expression of pulley belt and pulley here again you might get confused that are here there is relative motion but the uh, concepts the derivation that we have done was not for relative motion the expression of tension so can we do can we do not apply this confusion may arise so i am sure this discussion gave you clarity regarding how to approach this question and now the question is very simple have a look at that so if you look at the forces the tension acting on the rope T1 is acting in the downward direction which will be equal to weight of this block mg basically and T2 will be acting in the downward direction which will be equal to mg divided by 100 and considering the cases of uh, relating this case with the case of belt and pulley this expression we can use T1 by T2 the tension on the tighter side divided by tension on the slacker side is equal to e to the power mu theta for this case mu value is definitely going to give us the answer this answer right question did not mention mu k question only mentioned mu but i am telling you it is mu k so here mu k also we can put for this situation of slip of relative motion theta is an interesting case here where again some students can do a mistake in visualization let's talk about theta first what should be the value of theta here so for that you need to realize how this is wrapped around the shaft if i look at this if i look at this situation from here from here from the end end view so this is how the cross section of the shaft is going to look this surface i am showing here right this is how the cross section of the shaft is going to look and this rope and this rope this rope this one that one which is on the back side where will be that where will be that rope that rope will be coming from here right that will rope will be coming from here correct and that will be wrapped around that will be wrapped around this like this right entirely it will be wrapped how many turns it starts from here from the back side i am showing you the contact starts from here from this point right where is this point this point is there on the back side on the back side of the circle similarly if i talk about the t2 side this was the t1 side right this side this is the t2 side this side this side this i have drawn here again if you look at it from here the rope this rope will look coming to the right side so on the right side i have shown that correct so where will it lose the contact here at this point it will lose the contact it will go vertically down from there correct this is important for you to visualize can you now tell how many turns are we having or in terms of theta or degree or radian can you tell how many turns are we having here it starts from this point that point so it will have one in or you can say half turn up to this point half turn up to this point correct and after that it is having one entire round up to this point so it has one and half turns one and half let me explain again from the back side from this back side from this back side it is starting contact from this point so up to this point from this point up to this point it is having half turn half turn correct and from this point how many turns it is having one entire turn this and wrapped completely up to this point after that it is losing contact correct so this is half turn this one from here up to here it is half turn from a to b 
it is half turn and from B to C it is one turn so total one and half turns we have here in terms of theta in which term do we put as we already know radians in radians you have to put not in degrees already explained that so this is equivalent to 3 pi let me write it with black color so in terms of radian it is equivalent to 3 pi right one half is pi and one entire turn is 2 pi so in total it is equal to 3 pi so the value of theta is going to be 3 pi that is sorted for us mu we need to find out t1 and t2 what do you think do you need to do anything it's already known to us t1 is equal to mg and t2 is equal to mg divided by 10 and now we'll just put the values in this expression t1 is equal to mg t2 is equal to mg divided by 10 that entire expression is equal to e to the power mu 3 pi correct mg mg will cancel the 1 by 10 in the denominator will go in the numerator and it will become 10 is equal to e to the power mu 3 pi and just take the natural log on both the sides. So this will become natural log 10 is equal to mu to the power 3 pi. Now what's left? Natural log 10 divided by 3 pi is your answer. Simply use your virtual calculator to get the value of mu as 0 0.244 which is the required answer for this question. A question which in the first look, in the first look may never look like a question of belt and pulley to most students. But I am sure this has taught you that how interesting the questions of belt and pulley are going to be. This is just the start, just the first example that we are discussing. Let's discuss many more beautiful and more complex examples than this one.